Okay, I'm back with more Secret of the Old Clock. Let me think, what last happened? The kitchen blew up. Um, was her face lost her jewelry? I already forgot her name. And we talked to our dad about something important. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> what do we do? Let's go talk to her again. I forgot her name too. So, is Emily all right? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? Did you happen to see anyone go upstairs during all the commotion that the fire caused? No, you mean someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers, if you can't trust a fireman, who can you trust? You're quick to blame the firemen when you were the only other one in the house. Are you sure no one besides you and Emily was in the kitchen this morning? Positive. Well, I suppose someone could have snuck in the back door. Are you saying someone caused that fire on purpose? To distract us? <laughs> it's funny, Nancy's like, so it's only you and Emily in the house. And she's like, yeah, I'm positive. Oh wait, that makes me look guilty. Well, someone could have snuck in the back door. <laughs> it's possible, don't you think? But I'm the only one who knows she had that jewelry. Well, it's not quite true. Go when Gloria was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry, it's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess better go call the sheriff. She keeps, like, convicting herself and then being like, yeah, I'm the only one. Well, I mean, someone, someone else could have. Is that your car I saw when I drove up the driveway? My old rust bucket's parked out back where nobody will see it. Be nice to buy something decent, but last time I checked, my last name was Willoughby, not Rockefeller. Willoughby. J Jane. Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. I think her name is Jane. There's the kitchen. All right, well, let's, oh, let's go in here. Nice. Oh, I think I remember this. No, I don't. <laughs> Bard Bounce. A game based on a Midsummer's Night Dream, a play by Will Shakespeare. Do Shakespeare proud by using the arrows to move each man to the woman with whom he belongs. Remember, love is never easy. Whenever you move someone, he will keep going until he hits an obstacle, another character, or the end of the row. So plan ahead. Yeah, just like men. No, I'm just kidding. Hazel's in here bouncing around in case you hear her. Okay, um... Shoot, I already don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Dad asked me to pick up something for him at Tubby Telegram, so forget. No time is on moon. Speed read time. Okay, so I think we're supposed to go out. Why does this have like a... Oh, cool! Okay, this is my items. I got a map. I think I'll need to memorize this. Zippy gas. Boy, we have the got gas for you. Oh man, I don't like that. Okay, so we need to go to Tubby Telegrams and then down to the bank. Where are we? Okay, well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Let's get going. Let's stop standing here just staring at Jane. Let's go for a drive, kids. Hmm, that car I saw before is gone. Oh, okay. Oh, it hit the space bar to park. I don't remember how to drive. Oh, okay. It's the arrow keys. Oh. oh I forgot how hard driving is. Is he inverted? Oh, this is hard. <laughs> okay. Watch for potholes. Okay, there's the bank. So we need to go to Tuffy Telegrams, which is like up here. Oh no! No! Yeah. Go. No! Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Something I can do for you? Well, my name's Nancy Drew, and my father Say said Say no that... more. You're here to pick up some papers. They're in that envelope. 
thank you. You're welcome. Say, is that your roadster out there? Yes, it is. Did I park somewhere I shouldn't have? No, no, it's just that my regular driver never showed up today, so I've got no way to deliver oh, no. all these telegrams. How would you like to earn some extra cash? You mean you want me to deliver them for you? You've got a car, you're trustworthy, or at least your father thinks you are, so what do you say? I'll pay you 25 cents each time you complete a delivery. And you might even get some tips. Should I say no? I suppose that if I say no, I can come back and say yes. I'm just gonna say no. No, I don't think so. All right, but if you change your mind, just yeah. come on in. Never hurts to have a little extra spending money, you know? I'll keep that in mind. Bye. This is back in the year when you could just trust anybody who came in. Like, hey, do you want to do this, like, super important thing for me? I mean, everyone's gonna say that to Nancy anyway, but still. Okay, so... Was it... No, it wasn't the jewel. Oh, it was the bank. I just missed it. Hello, I'm looking for Jim Archer. Right through that door. Oh my Hello. goodness. Hello, are you Nancy Drew? Yes, are you Mr. Archer? Yes, ma'am, Jim Archer. I'm founder, president, manager, and just about everything else you can name when it comes to this fine enterprise. I hear that some businesses aren't doing so well these days. Ever since the stock market crashed, one business after another has closed, including banks. President Hoover keeps saying that a recovery is just around the corner, but you have to wonder. Um, I'll tell you what is around the corner. Uh, war. Is your bank doing okay? I'm happy to report that we're doing just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Main Street Bank, Jim Archer speaking. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but... Yes, I know, but... All right, then just bring it by. He's so sad. Oh, Sorry for mind. the interruption. How can I help you? Do you happen to know whether the jewelry Emily inherited from her mother was insured? Well, I know for a fact that it was not. Why? Because someone snuck into the inn today and stole it. Oh, no. I heard there'd been a fire in the kitchen, but when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? I told Gloria not to let that policy lapse. That is the fakest sympathy I have ever heard. Why did she let it lapse? She felt that since Josiah Crowley would be leaving her a large sum of money when he died, or so she thought, paying to insure her jewelry just wasn't necessary. How well did you know Josiah Crowley? Well enough for him to name me executor of his will. An executor is the person who makes sure the terms of a will are carried out. Why do you think he wound up leaving Gloria nothing? I have no idea. Truth be told, he'd given me the impression that I would be well taken care of when he passed on too. But when I finally read his will, it all went to top him. Where did Josiah keep his will? He'd hidden it in a chest of drawers in his house. It took me months to find it. When he named me executor, he said he'd tell me where it was hidden when the time was right. Whatever that meant. Did he get a twinkle in his eye? That's what Emily said. How did Josiah die? He was sitting in the public library reading when apparently his heart just decided it was time to stop. Hmm. What, what was he reading? <laughs> what was he reading? His favorite book, The Makeup Secrets of Lon Chaney. Sounds boring. No wonder he died. The will you found in Josiah's house. Is it possible that Josiah didn't really write it? Well, the thought that it could be a forgery did cross my mind. But an expert verified that the will had been typed on Josiah's typewriter and signed in Josiah's hand. Anyone can type on a typewriter. But Richard Topham lived in Josiah's house. He yeah. had access to his typewriter, and he could have copied his signature. Yeah. As far as the law is concerned, the matter is closed, Miss Drew. But it's possible that Josiah's real will is still out there. Are you sure he never gave you any clue as to where he'd hidden his will? Whenever I asked him, he said he'd tell me when the time is right. He said that. Although, he got a safe deposit box here about three years ago. Has it been opened? Topham has tried to claim its contents, but he can't find the key. So we need to find the key. Maybe he knows the real will could be in there. Only he wants to destroy it. Now, Miss Drew, I wouldn't go jumping to any conclusions. It's what I do best. How well do you know Jane Willoughby? You know, Emily's guardian? Not well at all. Met her once or twice. Seemed a little flighty. 
That's exactly what she said. Emily's like, takes one to know one, I guess. What was Emily's mom like? Had a good head on her shoulders. Friendly, too. Having a big slice of blueberry pie at the lilacan was always a real treat. It'd be nice if family could carry on the tradition, but times are just too tough. If she's smart, she'll sell before the bills start piling up. I guess I'll be going. Goodbye now. Can I snoop around your Don't office? Don't you ever use this typewriter? That used to be Josiah Crowley's. It was the only thing he left me in his will. Naturally, it doesn't work. The keys always jam. I think it's because the one Topham guy pressed it so hard that he broke them. I'm supposed to fix this later, aren't I? October 9, 1929. Dear Mrs. Sheldon, here is the trivet I said you could borrow for your party at Twin Elms. Please take care of it because I will want it back someday. Your friend, Josiah C. I wonder if Josiah ever got his trivet back. I wonder what a trivet is. Who's Clara? Clara Pickford is this lonely old woman who comes in here every once in a while. Took a shine to me for some reason. Insisted on giving me that picture. I ate in the hole. I'm not even gonna comment on that. Oh, can I go in here? Oh, no. Is this your car? Yes, it is. Bought and paid for. It'd be funny if there was like a reference to ghost dogs in here somewhere. Because it's like it took place around this time. I'm gonna like mention Mickey Malone or something. Alright, we're going home. I can't, I can't, I can't drive any. I'm done. Nailed it. Alright. 